The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, UNU Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. It is Tuesday night here on Armed Radio. You are listening to 2AT Second Amendment Talk. I am Daniel Sanders and joining me on the phone this evening is my co-host Rod Burks. Rod, how you doing this evening? Man, I'm I'm happy to be back and a happy new year. Yes, yes. It was how was your new year? I just, we haven't uh, we hadn't talked since then. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's been spectacular. You know, going through a transition um, at the moment, trying to uh, move up and into bigger and better things. Excellent, excellent. And Christmas, Christmas was good too. Yeah, yeah, spending time with the family, you know, the grandkid and, and uh, daughters, and, you know, uh, yeah, great, great, and yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't bad. I'm just, uh, I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, and it's all over but the crying. Right? Yeah, now, now I can, now I can go back to trying to save money again. So. <laughs> As we do at the start of every show here, we want to give a big shout out to the troops, men and women serving overseas and on the home front. We appreciate everything you're doing. Keep up the good work. Come home safe. We're all rooting for you. And speaking of uh, overseas, um, we're we're just we're just going to have to talk about this because this is this is some pretty serious shit. Um, As most of our listeners are aware, I'm sure of by now, uh, a few days ago, we uh, took out one of Iran's top uh, military commanders in uh, in Iraq. Um, no, the, the the top general. No, the like, top. Yes, like number three. He it, it, like the equivalent of the Secretary of Defense, right? Like, like imagine if if Iran had had whacked General Mattis. Yes. Whenever he was the sec death. Yes. Mean, that, that, that's the significance of 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 what happened on Saturday. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, we took him out, and then earlier this evening, uh, in retaliation at approximately 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, reports began coming in. Uh, Tehran has announced responsibility for launching um, over a dozen ballistic missiles against U.S. military bases in al-Assad and Erbil, Iraq. Um no reports yet as to any casualties or anything like that. But um, again, Iran is claiming responsibility for having launched over a dozen ballistic missiles at U.S. military bases, uh, Al-Assad and Erbil in Iraq. So uh, we are definitely going to be keeping track on this because I'm sure reports are going to be coming in updated almost instantly just i mean it's just gonna be pouring in yeah i i think what we're seeing is a game of well not a game but but you know it's it's absolutely a a um yeah i guess i guess i'll call it a game of brinkmanship right because if you recall uh i believe last fall maybe late late summer uh i ran had shot down a drone and of course you know they said it was in their airspace and, and you know, the united states said it was a uh, international airspace, or whatever. Um, point being that, that that this has kind of been ongoing, and, and it's finally getting to a boiling point. Um, I, I mean, you know, if you, if you look at, at at the two countries the United States has been most heavily involved with, um, in the, greater than the last fifteen years, um, we basically sandwiched Iran between, you know, being having forces in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, I, I don't think that's a coincidence, but. Yeah. Um, so I am. Uh, I'm currently looking at uh, the Daily Mail's website, um, looking at uh, everything that we have so far. Um, it says uh, Iran State TV said tens of surface-to-surface missiles were launched. Um, it's unclear, as I said, if there's any casualties at this time. 
Uh, it says local reports initially suggested that five rockets had struck the Altaji military base situated 30 kilometers north of Baghdad after shelter in place sirens were heard. However, Kurdistan 24 reporter Barzan Sadiq later tweeted that the base was calm on Tuesday night and suggested the purported attack was likely just a drill. Reports of the strike occurred just hours after a flurry of U.S. airstrikes were carried out on militia bases in western Iraq and Syria. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's definitely been a response to, um, um, to, to you know, the president's uh, intolerance for for aggression. Yes. Um, it's uh, it's 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 a pretty serious situation without a doubt um absolutely you know and and especially you know especially for for those um contractors you know those, those that are there to support you know those americans and, and other expats that that have traveled to work for uh, like kvr and, and 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 whatnot um in support of like you know the fifth fleet bombing or or you know the the, the Everything from chow halls to fuel depots to, to facilities, you know, all, all of that infrastructure necessary to sustain a force over there. You know, I mean, they, they, in my mind, anyway, they, they are the, the um, they are the, 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 well, the word I'm looking for is escaping me. Um, they're a target. Um, in my mind, even though Iran did did state that that in one of their um, public um, no, like news conferences or whatever, um, they said they said that only American military were the targets. Uh, however, you know where do they draw the line for a militant or for who's a combatant and who's non combatant? Right. You know, is, is somebody who's in one of these supporting roles in establishment? Are they um, are they considered military because they sub- directly support military operations, even though their finger isn't on a trigger? Right. Um, now it does say here uh, again. Iranian state TV said tens of surface to surface missiles were launched by the Revolutionary Guards Aerospace Division that can con- that controls the country's missile program. They reported the operation's name was Martyr Soleimani. Named after the general killed in the U.S. drone strike. So, you know, not only are they claiming responsibility for it, they're claiming it was in direct retaliation to us taking out General Soleimani. Yeah, have you seen a picture of him? Um, of Soleimani after the after he got hit by the missile. Uh, I mean, was there anything left of him? Um, well, you know, um, I, I, I think he finally quit smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but truth be told, he, he actually kind of looked like a burnt, uh, cherry cobbler. Um, that's what my girlfriend is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's dark. You know, that's almost some, um, and, and this is going to be off topic, topic, a little bit of a rabbit trail, but I just had to, uh, did you, did you watch the Golden Globes on Sunday? No, no, I um, I avoid that kind of stuff. So, Ricky Gervais, he, he, since this is his last year hosting the Golden Globes, he held nothing back. And someone sent uh, a meme to me, and it was a picture of Ricky Gervais, and they called him the dark humor guy. And then it was a picture of Tom Hanks with this real, like, oh shit look on his face. And they called him the civilian and then it was a picture of Adam Driver uh, laughing his ass off, and it says veteran, and it says that when that when civilians hear dark humor versus veterans. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's I can I can just imagine you know there's somebody out there that never served in the military that heard your <laughs> heard your burnt cobbler comment just now and is going. Oh my God! What is wrong with him? <laughs> right. Well, you know, and and, and this brings, this illustrates a good point because that that actually came from well, you know, I call her my girlfriend, my fiance. Um, you know, she's um, uh, you know, she gets she gets my humor, and, and I would have to think that that a majority 
of the, the, the people who, who love and support veterans. Um, maybe not to the same degree as, as, as fellow veterans, but they get us, right? Yeah. Um, and, 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 or maybe they're just more tolerant and, and it, it's even better when they can throw some back. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah, I just wanted to throw in a plug real quick for, for those that, uh, support and love us, um, even though we're, 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 we hardly deserve it. <laughs> right. Um, so, but yeah, we're definitely, uh, I know I personally am going to be keeping an eye on this situation because I mean, this is, to me, this has World War Three written all over it. You know, I think World War Three's already come and gone. Um, you know, I mean, and, and it wasn't the nuclear war that everybody thought it was going to be. Um, you know, I think the Cold War was kind of like uh, a, a World War Three light, um, meaning that yeah, you know, it, it was the threat um, of brinkmanship. I, I think what we're looking at now is almost like World War Four. You know, this, this is a, a asymmetrical. Um, fight where, where, you know, countries, um, ideologies and whatnot are still trying to impose their will. It's just, you know, gone are the days of the conventional battlefield where, you know, you, you know who the bad guy is and, and, you know, you can bring force to bear and, you know, somebody gives up at the end of the day. And those days are gone, in my opinion. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you know, Iran is a nuclear power. And, you know, like you said, everybody uh, was was scared to death that World War Three was going to be the nuclear fallout war that... Every, and, I mean, like I said, Iran is a nuclear power. Mm-hmm. And it's... It's, it's, it's dangerous. I think Iran is crazy enough to actually try and use them. Yeah, and, and but at the same time, I don't think they're they're, they're foolish enough to 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 think that that they could um, effectively use them better than anybody else, right? I mean, I mean, mutually assured destruction is still a a a reality, right? For our, and, and anybody else that that is a nuclear power, to be honest. I mean, I mean, Kim Jong Un, um, you know, what, what, what's stopping him? Um. Um, <laughs> uh, well, the man that has nothing to lose. Um, I think, um, I think, I think the little drone strike that we did that took out General Soleimani. I think that's what's stopping Old Kim from. <laughs> right, you know that, that. Yeah, that sends a very good message to to you know anybody who who's thought of you know. And, and China actually is one of the biggest supporters of Iran. You know, I mean, despite. Sanctions by the United States and, and everything, um, you know, China needs the resources that, that Iran provides. Um, and, and so they kind of been like, nah, you know, you know we don't care. Um, so, so if, if anything, it, it's sending a message to, to, to the Chinese that, that yeah, that this administration doesn't play. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, that's a, <sighs> I mean, as much as I hate to say it, that's really a a dangerous idea. I think that you know our 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 our, our current administration is uh, is is basically has the balls enough to say we're not fucking around. It's and and and, and it's not that I'm against the idea of it. It's you know, as long as I've been alive, it's not really been, you know, as, lo- as long as I've been alive, it's, we're going to resort, we, we're going to, uh, you know, we're, we're going to exhaust all other resources before we have to go into this. And this current administration is like, yeah, we're not going to bother wasting our time with all that shit. We're just going to come fuck you up. Well, I'm 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 going to agree to disagree with you because you know the, the, there's there's an acronym for for these types of things. Um, it, it's called DIME: uh, Diplomacy, Information, Military, and Economic. And 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 I think that that you know previous administrations focused less on on some of the economic and used the threat of military. So you had the big M in DIME, and everything else were smaller letters. 
um, I think with this administration, at least they've put emphasis, in, emphasis on all of them. You know, I mean, like, uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, who, who knows what's going on in diplomatic channels? I mean, I don't. I'm sure somebody, um, you know, much smarter than me does. But, the, you know, the, I mean, the information, you know, I mean, he, he's tweeting what's going on. You know, like, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're taking out bad guys. You know, um, so, so the, with the information in the military, but he's also got the economic. You know, he, he pulled out of the, the Iran uh, or the, the, the nuclear um, talks uh, deal with, with Iran. Well, because it was bad for the United States. I mean, we're, we were basically giving them money for them to behave. Yeah. You know, you, you shouldn't have to incentivize people to do the right thing. Well, I mean, it's the right. same concept with a child. You don't give a child an, an, an award up front and then expect them to be good. Let's, right. Let's see here. Right. E exactly. Um, and, and, you know, with, with the, uh, the trade deals with China, you know, everybody was like, Oh my God! But but I mean, look at our economy. I mean, it, you can't argue with numbers, right? I, I mean, you know, I, I've always kind of, I don't despise being counters, but I've always kind of been like, hey, let's just get this done and then figure out, you know, the bills later. Which, you know, okay, yeah, um, not the best approach, uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I I think if you're smart about the decisions you make, all of that stuff takes care of itself. Um, Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree. Like I said, it's just, it's, it's a, ba just based on what I've seen in my lifetime. It's kind of a foreign concept, um, that we are as ballsy as we are with other people in the world. I guess. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not against the idea of it. It's just I'm still, I'm still processing it because, you know, everything that I've seen from childhood on has been. We don't want to use the military, but you're not leaving us any other option. And this current administration is going, I wish a motherfucker would. Well, maybe, no, I, 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 I see why you would think that. And, and, and you know, because the media, you know, when's the last time you heard anything on the news about Afghanistan? You know, oh, but God. there are still troops yes. over there. There are still service members that, that, that are, are shedding sweat. Um, blood and tears. Yeah. For 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 what he, you know. So, so just because it's not reported on doesn't mean it's not happening. Right. But there are still uh, active acts of aggression. Um. You, you know. And and Iran is is a known um, exporter of terror. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the the they're basically training people to to create this outer shell, right? You know, like like in, in whenever you're doing your fire plan sketches, you want um, defense in depth. Right, you want inflate, defilate. Um, you know, you, you want all of you want obstacles. You, you know, you want your obstacles covered by fires. Right, that's what they've done, and, and you know, kind of like the United States mindset. Like, hey, yeah, attack them there, so you don't have to fight them here. Um, Iran, they're reading from the same playbook. You know, they, they're exporting. You know, what we call terror. Um, that's just their operations um, abroad, because you know they don't want. The same thing we don't want. You know, we don't want a huge conventional war. Or at least nobody with any kind of sense wants, you know, a nuclear war. Um, so, so yeah, it's 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 the same smell, just different skitties. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Uh... I don't know. Like I said, it's just it's it's a foreign concept to me. And like you said, it's mo it's mostly because of you know the media and all that other stuff. Um, now, like I said, I'm gonna I'm I'm definitely gonna be keeping track on all this, um, and I'll update as updates come in. In the meantime, um, Virginia, Virginia, uh, a, fr a friend of mine. Um, who lives in Virginia, she recently sent me another bill that um, the Virginia House is trying to have passed. Uh, it's uh, House Bill number 567. And this is... Um, it says, uh, the Code of Virginia is amended by adding in Article 3 of Chapter 12 of Title 18.2. Uh, indoor shooting ranges prohibited in private buildings, exceptions, and penalties. Um, 
It says, uh, as used in this section, indoor shooting range means any fully enclosed or indoor area or facility designed for use of rifles, shotguns, pistols, silhouettes, skeet, trap, or other black or black powder or any other similar sport shooting. And then it says, it is unlawful to operate an indoor shooting range in any building not owned or leased by the Commonwealth or the federal government unless... Fewer than 50 employees work in the building, or at least 90% of the users in the indoor shooting range are law enforcement officers, as defined in Section 9.1, blah, 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 or federal law enforcement officers. The indoor shooting range maintains a log of each user's name, phone number, address, and the law enforcement agency where such user is employed. And finally, the indoor shooting range verifies each user's identity and the address by requiring all users to present a government-issued photo identification card. Any person that violates the provisions of this section is subject to a civil penalty of not less than $1,000, no more than $100,000 for the initial violation and $5,000 per day for each day of violation thereafter. Wow. That's, that's heavy. Um, and, and so... What they're saying is, is, is that um, only the government can can um, train and practice, you know, firearms um, indoors. In, in, yeah, indoors, out, out of the elements, you know. I mean, because really, what, what is the? You know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of indoor ranges. Um, you know, I did go to one in um, Florida, there on the west coast, uh, called Reload. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it was uh, it, it was like the Taj Mahal of ranges, and, and it kind of spoiled me. <laughs> but 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 I mean, by far and large, though, most indoor ranges, uh, I mean, they're loud, they're dark, um, they're crowded. And, you know, you, you're you're very limited. You can only like point and shoot. There's no you know, you, there's very limited training quality you can get um, because of all the rules of indoor ranges anyway. Right, you know, I've actually looked at opening um, a range, and, and that's actually what kind of you know what I hope to do this year is to build an outdoor range, a long range. Um, and, and and the advantages of the outdoor range are are that you know you don't have to fight with um, the EPA so much. You know, I mean, because you've got to have you know uh, filters, uh, special filters for your your air handlers that can capture lead. Um, that, that that may be airborne, um, and then you have to dispose of them as hazardous material. You can't just you know pitch them in the garbage, right? Um, and then you've got all the lead that you've collected and, and whatnot. So, so so you know it, it's very cost prohibitive. You know, for for a guy like me who doesn't have unlimited funds, um, to to own or build, own, and operate an indoor range, right? Which is why I've chosen an outdoor range. You know, the, you do a couple of uh, you know shelters. Um, for, for your firing line and then have, uh, static targets, you know, out of either known distance or unknown distance or, or whatever different, you know, ranges. Um, and I mean, you still have to be concerned with the EPA and the environmental impact, but that's, that's much easier to mitigate because, um, you know, if you build berms, um, you know, if the EPA comes in and says, hey, you need to clean up your lead, you can hire somebody and it pretty much pays for itself because they'll harvest the lead. Right. And basically pay you for the lead, but you're paying them for the labor, so it's a wash, right? Yeah. Um, well, this thing she pointed out to me, uh, and, I, and I never would have thought of this until she pointed it out to me, is the NRA. NRA headquarters is in Virginia. And I've been to the NRA headquarters and museum. Very awesome place, but they have an indoor shooting range there. And under this provision, under under this bill, the NRA shooting range would be considered illegal. Hmm. Wow! So, so this is an attack and and, and a, a very overt um, attack on 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 the NRA. The, 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 the yeah, the, the organization that that you know what San Francisco labeled a terrorist organization. Yes, you know, a few months back we talked about on the show. That, that you know, and, and, and the NRA was was founded to train people to teach people because after the Civil War, um, Revolutionary Civil War, um, people forgot how to shoot. I mean, they, like like you know, their, their focus was on you know 
trying to sustain life and, and, and you know, build families and, and make, make homes and homesteads and all that. Yeah. Um, the NRA was like, hey, we've got a problem. Um, you know, this is a skill that is that has become, um, you know, almost archaic in, in the minds of, 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 our, of our citizens. Yeah. And so, so their focus was, hey, we need to train people to be responsible and, and, and effective and efficient, you know, and, and I don't, I, I, I don't disagree with that, you know, and I've said it before, that's why I started my business, because I feel education is one thing that, mm-hmm. that you know, teaching people to shoot is, is, is not, it, it's not a liability, it's an asset. You know, if, if, if you have people who know how to use tools, you know, it, it's a trade, right? It's a craft and, and it's a perishable skill that, that if you don't use, if you don't practice, if you don't hone, um, yeah, it, 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 it goes away. Right. Um, and you know, I was talking with it. Uh, I was talking with a, a friend of mine today, um, about this very subject about, you know, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of people being educated and properly trained when it comes to firearms. And, you know, today I gave two examples to somebody. Uh, the first one that came to mind was an elderly gentleman at the shooting range that I go to who most of his life was spent handling revolvers. He'd never really had much experience with semi-automatics. So um, he's out at the range with a Glock. He notices I'm down range, uh, down the firing line, and I'm with a friend of mine. We're shooting a video on some stuff, and he comes up and asks if I could give him some advice. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I don't mind. Not one bit. So he's got a Glock 19, and he says, you know, I bought this gun brand new. They told me it's got a 15-round capacity, but I'm only getting like seven, eight shots out of it. Well, let's see what's going on here. And I noticed... He'd fire around, he'd rack the slide. He'd fire around, he'd rack the slide. Mm-hmm. So he was ejecting every other round out of his magazine. Right. So I said, okay, well, what you're doing wrong, and he's he's still hot, he's still got a round in the chamber, and he stops, rotates, and flags me. So right, what'd you do? <laughs> well, first thing I did was jump out of the way, and then I very politely asked him to point his firearm back down range. Mm-hmm. The second time he did it, I wasn't as nice. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have, uh, I would have made sure that he paid attention during the the, the break fall class and everything there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the second the second time he flagged me, I was not as nice, and after a few choice expletives were said. Uh, I finished it off with, if you flag me again, I'm going to take it as an act of aggression. Mm-hmm. So, um, he was, Wait, was he apologetic or was he, he was, like, he was yeah. very apologetic. Um, and, and, you know, I hate, I hated to be that way with him because he was an elderly man, but at the same time, you're an elderly man, you know, somewhere along the way. If you've been handling guns your entire life, I would think you would know this at some point. You know that's easy to say, but but it's it's it, I I think you know I see it like um, so my fiance's son, you know, for Christmas Santa bought him a Ruger ten twenty two, mm-hmm. and um, I just happen to have a suppressor that fits on it, so so that you know I can you know we don't have to wear ear protection while I'm giving him you know, while he's shooting, and, and so that, that I can give him good and wholesome instruction, and he can hear everything I'm saying, and I know that they, you know, that his hearing won't be damaged, you know, mine's already, you know, fucked, but that's just neither here nor there. Um, but, but there was, you know, and I'm trying to teach him how to change from position to position, you know, from the standing, kneeling, sitting, uh, prone, um, and he flagged me, and, 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 you know, I made a big deal of it, because you have to. Right. Um, because if you don't, they think, oh, well, you know, it, it um, and, 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 you know, I'm not saying that, you know, yelling and cussing at the, at, at the child is, is the right answer, but, but I mean, you know, I mean, we, we conducted a full stop. All right. You know, un- unload, put it on safe. We're going to talk about this, you know, because we always start every class with the four safety rules. Right. Um, you, you know, even if we're going out only to shoot like maybe, you know, 20 rounds, um, at a paper target 25 yards away, um, 
before any any rounds get loaded into magazines um, or, or or shotgun shells or anything, we're, we're discussing safety. Um, and, and that's got to be the priority because if you don't harp on it, you don't drill it, um, you know, you don't put extra emphasis on it, and, and you don't make instant and immediate corrections when, 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 when there's infractions, then, then you're part of the problem. So, so you are absolutely right in, in, you know, letting them know you're putting other people at risk. Right. So, so, and, and, and I think, you know, and, and maybe not everybody, you know, can, can muster the, the voice to say that. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I have a story of from, I, I was teaching a class out on a, um, a private range um, that was, you know, membership based. So, so that, you know, there were probably, you know, a couple hundred members. And at any one time, there may be, you know, two dozen on the range. And um, so, so, you know, I talked about this, the, the four safety rules. And, and I had um, a, a gentleman and his wife there and, and one of their friends. And, and, you know, we're sitting there discussing the finer arts and details of, of shooting. And there was somebody who was downrange. You know, we were, in, we were in a cold status. Now, this range didn't have any visual or audio um, indicators that the range was cold. It was just kind of like, hey, we're cold, or can we go cold? Yeah, yeah, we're cold. And it was just like, you know, up and down the line, all right, we're cold. And then, then somebody goes down to the 200-yard line and changes targets or whatever. Um, well, in, in, during this cold status, somebody was downrange, and somebody else had pulled up to the range, jumped out of their truck, you know, th- threw out their, their mat, um, slapped in a magazine, was getting ready to start shooting on a target. And, and you know, one of my students, who, you know, I had my back to the whole thing. She's like, hey, that guy's getting ready to shoot. Um, and, and, and so my point is, 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 you know, you really have to drive home the safety because, you know, you, your eyes can't be everywhere. But, but if everybody around you is, is collectively um, you know, has that mindset of safety. Uh, and, you know, and, 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 you know, the, the, I guess the point of the story, the moral of the story, is you know, we were able to to, to inform the the guy that had just showed up the range. Hey, there are people down range. Um, you know, we're in a cold set. Um, and, and of course, you know, I relayed this to the owners of the range. They're like, hey, man, you need lights or flags or horns or or, or or something. You know, so people can can look and see. Hey, the range is hot. The range is cold. Yeah. Um, but, but just by, by knowing the four, because really, I mean, let's be honest, you have to screw up all four safety rules at the exact same time in order for somebody to get hurt, right? Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, I mean, if, if, <laughs> you know, if, if any one of the four rules, um, uh, are, are being adhered to, it, you know, you, you can most likely avert, you know, a, a, a serious injury or, or even worse, you know, a fatality. Yeah, and, you know, going, now, th- this isn't really so much of a safety issue thing as it is just, you know, again, people just need to be trained and educated. Um, I was actually in Iraq, and Na- uh, the, the, the Navy unit that was on base with us uh, decided to come out and do a BZO with us. So, one of their officers, I think she was a lieutenant junior grade. She's uh, she's shooting her weapon, and I mean, she is all over the target. So I'm watching her, and as she's shooting, I notice she's shooting right-handed, but she's aiming with her left eye. Yeah, she's cross-dominant. Yeah, so I asked her, I said, ma'am, are you left or right-handed? She says, well, I'm right-handed, but I'm left-eye dominant. Okay, well, you're dancing all over the target, and you're going to hit everything but what you're aiming at if you ever get in a combat situation. So, try this. Switch the weapon to your left shoulder. Now, if you can picture this, I've never... Well, I take that back. I've seen it one... um, I've seen it one other time, and it was my niece that did this, but we won't get into that. So... If you can picture this, she is holding her rifle in a right-handed stance, and all she does is move the weapon to her left shoulder. She doesn't switch hands, so she's still holding it in a right-handed stance, but it's in her left shoulder. Right hand on the pistol grip, left hand on the hand guards up front. Well, but stocking her left exactly shoulder. exactly what you said, though. <laughs> <laughs> you told her. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll put. I'll. You're right. I'll push for that one. But I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and that's funny because my fiance's son, who I'm, you know, kind of, yeah, you know, the, the story I was telling earlier, um, I teach him. You know, he's cross dominant as well, so you know, he 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 instinctively picks up the rifle still right handed, and and that's what I ask him. I'm like, hey, oh, what are you shooting? Are you shooting rifle or pistol? Because you know, he can still shoot pistol right handed. He just has to bring his left eye over, right? But you know, rifle, and and even the the the, the ten twenty two is a little bit big for him. So, so he almost has to, um, you know, put the, the, the stock in his armpit. Um, so, so, you know, it, it looks a little wonky, but, but uh, you know, I, I, you know, he's come a long way. He can shoot. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I just, I, I was, I was so just dumbfounded. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you've got to blame yourself for that. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, really you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, you can sit here and laugh at it now, but it, but it, it's it, they did exactly what you said. They did, they did. They absolutely, she absolutely did, no out. doubt. But I mean, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't. Maybe it's because I'm 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 not in the Navy, so I don't know how the Navy works, and certainly not a naval officer. Um, I know, I would think at least to an extent that uh, Marine Corps OCS training. Um, they get a lot of familiarization with the rifle as uh, regular enlisted User recruits do. Your channel. Well, I mean, since we're bashing officers, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I observed in Kabul. Um, I, I think it was right before. Yeah, the the reason I was in Kabul was the, the USO had um, they had brought out Kid Rock, Robin Williams, um, and like uh, Lance Armstrong and Miss Universe or whatever. And, um, but anyway, so, so, you know, that, that was going to happen later that evening. Um, so, so, you know, I was like, all right, well, let's set the chow hall. And, uh, it, it could be, um, you know, you have to clear your rifle every time you go right. to the chow hall. And there's a, um, there's an army lieutenant, uh, who, who sticks her rifle into the clearing barrel, fires around. He's like, oh shit, racks another round, right? So, so ejects the round that was in there, but, you still got the, the, the magazine in. Fires a second round in the clearing barrel, then removes the magazine and fires a third round. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and at this point, everybody's like freaking the fuck out in a tailspin, like, fucking stop! <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I was embarrassed that, that this was an officer. Um, uh, I was embarrassed for them. But Tell, anyway. more, I can... Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that because this was uh, a chow hall on base, then um, there was probably a Ugandan standing guard there. Yeah, um, I, I think, yeah, yeah or, no, no, no. The, who are the guys that carry the Gurkhas? The... The Nepalese or something? Yeah, yeah. That's from Nepal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, th I thought he was going to cut her hands off. <laughs> See, we had we had a similar incident, army guy in Iraq in my in in uh, my base who wasn't as bad. Um, he just ejected a round, chambered another round, then dropped his magazine, and then fired the round into the barrel. So he he only fired one round. Um, but the Ugandan that was on guard at the Chow Hall, uh, he was he was getting ready to start slaying bodies. <laughs> <laughs> he thought his day had come. <laughs> yes, he's like, oh, the motherfucker finally did. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, like I said, you know, I am, I am a huge proponent of people being um, trained and educated when it comes to firearms. I want, I would love more than anything if you're going to take on the responsibility of owning a firearm, then take the responsibility of knowing how to use the firearm safely and properly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I'm, and I'd like to plug my company real quick. It's, it's called 2A Training Group, LLC. So please Google it. Um, you know, and, and if, you know, you're interested in, in joining a shooting team or if you just want to increase your own uh, comfort and familiarity with your firearm, 
um, you know, seek out me or, or, or somebody like me. You know, I mean, if, 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 if I can't get to you, I'll find a resource in your area that um, they'll be happy to, to, you know, conduct a training for you and, and, and your loved ones. Because, you know, at the end of the day, um, everybody who, who, who may have access to that firearm needs to be smart about, you know, at, at the minimum. How to unload it, right? And, and yeah. like how to keep it, you know, like like safe and, and, and in a in a condition that's, you know, less threatening, yeah. right? At a minimum, right? So 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 that, that, that you know because that that is my biggest fear, right? and and I'm not gonna lie, it is that one of my firearms um, is responsible. Or, or, or not necessarily is responsible because I am openly responsible for what happens about firearms. But if one of my firearms is used and injures somebody I love, um, that, that to me is is the ultimate sin. You know, that, right. that's unforgivable. Um, so, so that's what that's why I take so much pride in, in what I do and what I teach, and, and I'm very passionate about it. So, so if you if you want to call, you want to uh, you know, um, look up my company, Two A Training Group LLC. My phone number's on there. Text me, email me, whatever. Um, and, and if, if, if you just want to talk about it, ask stupid questions, we won't make fun of you. Um, at least not by name on the radio show. But. <laughs> the only stupid question is the one not asked, especially when it comes to firearms and firearm safety. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, yeah, you know, this, I just, I can't, I can't stress it enough after, you know, having been flagged by somebody who, I thought, given their age and experience, I won't say experience because, you know, you could be 99 years old and have never handled a firearm in your entire life. But certainly given their age, I made the wrong assumption that, uh, you know, after hearing, oh, yeah, I've been using revolvers my whole life and this is my first semi-automatic and I just don't know what I'm doing with it. I, I incorrectly made the assumption that, okay, he's, even though he's, stupid when it comes to semi-automatics he's still going to be a safe individual and i was wrong well you, you know it, it, it's interesting because anytime you introduce something new um for some reason the, the fundamentals seem to, to get forgot it, you know like, like like you may be the the world's you know mo most astute uh, attentive driver um, but you put them in a new vehicle and and you know now all of a sudden their attention is trying to figure out how to turn on the windshield wipers and they run a red light, you know, or they swerve in a lane. No. You know what I mean? So, 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 you know, and, and, and I don't know the guy. I, I wasn't there, and I'm not trying to defend his rationale. But, but you know, anytime you have something new, you've got to go slow. You know right. what I mean? Um, and because you can't deviate from, from, you know, those fundamentals, which are, you know, number one, safety. Um, right. And, you know, really and truly, um, you know, I wasn't there when he bought the gun, um, but I'm just going to go on ahead since, since, you know, I'm already the king of assumptions as it is. I'm going to go on ahead and assume that the guy that sold him the gun at whatever store it was didn't take the time and opportunity to say, okay, you've never had experience with a semi-automatic. Let me explain to you how a semi-automatic differs from a revolver. Well, you know, and, and they may have had the same assumption, too. He, he may not have shared that this was his first semi-automatic, you know, and, and like, you know, and, and I see, I see, you know, God love them, uh, Shepherd Tactical, they're, they're my, my local gun store, you know, run by a bunch of Marines, buddies of mine, and, you know, I, I, I see the way they handle guns out of the cases, and I'm just like, man, you're a poster child of what not to do right now. You know what I mean? I mean, but, but realize it. You know, their focus is on making the sale. You know, right. they're not there, and you know, they they don't look at it as they're on a range with firearms. They're there is, hey, I've got product, and you know, I mean, they do. You know, open the action and and lock the slide to the rear or open the cylinder um, before handing somebody a gun that wants to, to hold it. Um, but it's just you know, it, they're pointing it at the customer whenever they're locking into the rear. You, you know what I mean? And, and I'm just like, man, yeah. I, I, I wish I could videotape it so you could see from my side, you know, how the, stupid this the, looks. The, the bad habits that, that you, you may be inculcating into somebody who, 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 who's interested in this industry, you know, or, or in the sport. Um, and, and, you know, this may be their first impression. And here you are pointing it on, even though, 
you know, you know it's unloaded, right? Um, the first safety rule, you know, every yeah. firearm is always loaded. Yeah, you know, and and I had a similar incident today um, where I was looking at a a new firearm, um, and I wanted to see it already had a Burris Fast Fire red dot uh, attached to it, and I wanted to see how it would ride in my holster. Uh, if you know the light or if the the sight would impede it locking into the holster or anything, so I had already safely cleared my pistol so I could take the light off, had the slide locked to the rear, and even though I had the barrel pointed up while I was trying to remove my flashlight, the gun slipped out of my hand, and when I caught it. It accidentally flagged the gentleman behind the counter, um, which, you know, he was he was very understanding of the situation. Um, I apologize to him for having flagged him with my weapon. Um, and again, like I said, he was very understanding. But, you know, just me personally, even though I knew the gun was unloaded and safe, it still just it happened. And I hate the fact that it happened. Mm hmm. Right, right, absolutely. But, you know, and, and that's why I tell us, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to make a big deal out of safety infractions. But you've got to, like I said, you've got to screw up all four safety rules at the exact same time before somebody gets hurt. You know, you've got these different layers of protection. Right. And we've talked about that in, in, in other instances, but, it, but it's also true with firearm safety. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so... I just got a new tidbit of information in on this uh, missile attack. Uh, well, now, now you, you, you call it missiles, or, and, but I also heard it, it, it called rockets. Yeah. I mean, like, like is it? it? Well, it says the rockets used in the attack, according to Iranian TV, are FATA-110 ballistic missiles. Okay. Fata, Fata, whatever. F A T T E H. F A T T E H dash one ten, ballistic missiles. Hmm. So I wonder if they're firing them from ships or if they're firing from land. Uh. Well, according to a report I read earlier, they are surface to surface, which. Um, well, that that could be either or. Right? Yeah, it could I mean, be either or. Because, uh, from the, the, the sea surface. And, and the reason I ask that is is because that could change the dynamics, right? If, if they're shooting from, from their house, right, that's one thing. But if they're out in the international water shooting from the road, that, yeah, that's yeah. completely, yeah. That, that's a whole nother. Yeah. Um, um, well, it says they have a range of 186 miles or 300 kilometers. So... Yeah. If we're talking about launching them into Iraq, then they would have to be coming out of Iran. It couldn't. I don't think it could be a uh, seaborne attack. Mm. Okay. Spe especially with that range. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd have to look at a map to be honest. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with uh, Iraq as you are. Let's see here. Well, I know. <sighs> I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Iran is to the west of Iraq, western no, border of Iraq. Is it east? Uh, uh, well, Iraq is west of Iran. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then Afghanistan is to the east. Of yeah. Iran. Yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. I was I was looking at the map backwards. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking south instead of north. <laughs> uh, I, I got I got my land nav training from a second lieutenant. <laughs> oh come on, man. Come on. <laughs> I will land nav you into the dirt. Hey, that's not fair. You were enlisted before. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, but, you know, I'm, it, who makes officers? Enlisted. Yes. <laughs> so any 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 anything you see amiss in an officer, you have you, you, your your counterparts to blame. So uh, I am just as responsible as you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I blame their college mindset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, go, going back to the safety portion of it, you know, I just I can't I can't stress this enough. And I mean, we talk about it almost on every single show. That's 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 how much I cannot stress this safety, safety, safety. If you're going to be a responsible gun owner, 
take the responsibility and get yourself educated and trained. It is much better to have a if if you if you've got a thousand dollar budget, buy a five hundred dollar gun and get five hundred dollars worth of training instead of buying a thousand dollar gun. Yeah, yeah, good point. <laughs> Or get the training before you go out and get the gun, you know, so, so at least you know what it is that's important, you know. Right. Like, like you know, because I, I, you know, I think I've mentioned um, this client before. She, she's 70, I, 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 early to mid-70s, um, she's probably 90 pounds soaking wet. Um, she's like, hey, I just bought a gun. I want you to teach me. Um Pulls out a 1911, <laughs> 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 and, and, and and I'm like, God bless this person. But, but, but she like like she she had so much. She, uh, she would heal or, or anticipate so bad um, that 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 from three yards away, she's she shooting the dirt. Only hitting paper half the time. Um, I mean, not even anywhere near or on the target. Um, and, and and so so you know in this case you know, she probably would have benefited from from taking a class and hey you know what um I, you know I, I I the last gun I bought was a, a FN five seven um and and my fiance she she shoots and she she's like oh yeah I love this right because I mean it's it's basically a super twenty two right I'm um, gonna, I'm gonna interject something real quick yeah I hate you now continue. Okay, um, or, you know, and, and, and it was absolutely an impulse buy. I walked in, and, and I've been trying to like looking for these things, and just been like, uh, you know, but but whenever I, I show up in my gun, sh my, my local gun store, and they have one in the counter, right? And they're like, it's the only one. It just came in today. I was like, ah, I've got to have it. You know, like 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 reason is out the door, and 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 it's it's a, you know, for, for me, it's a business expense, right? Right. Um, so, so it's, it's, you know, I get a little tax benefit, but, but it is that, you know, I, I am absolutely not, I do not have buyer's remorse at all. Um, because, you know, despite the, the price tag and the cost of ammunition, um, I am confident that, that, you know, she can, um, use this firearm safely, effectively, and, you know, because it, you, you put a 22 in somebody's hand. And say, okay, defend your house. You, 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 uh, you're kind of setting them up for failure, right? Right. Um, at, at least in my mind. Well, I know I am. I don't know if you've seen them yet or not, but uh, as of today, I am now currently on a waiting list at one of my local gun stores for a Ruger five seven. Really, I did not know Ruger was making a five seven. Ruger. Uh, I just recently saw a video, and, I, and if I can find the article, I'll send it to you that has this on there. Uh, but Ruger has just produced a 5.7 to compete with the FN. Um, and surprisingly enough, it has more steel components than the FN does, and it's about half the price of the FN. According, yeah, yeah. According well, you know, to the, I, I like the FN because they're made here in, in Columbia, South Carolina. Right. So, so you know, I, I, I try to buy local as much as possible. Um, um, but according to the article that I read, MSRP uh, is about seven ninety nine, which means in most cases you'll probably be able to pick one up at a gun store for about six fifty seven hundred. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, but, but you know, I mean, like, like the ammunition for that gun is is uh, I mean, I, I bought it ridiculously a, expensive. I bought a PS ninety, um, which is awesome because I love having fifty rounds in a magazine. <laughs> Um, that's not a drum because I've, I've never had good luck with drums. I don't know if you, if, if you have, um, you know, I've heard if you don't load them up all the way, they're fine, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Where, where's the, the, the FN PS nineties magazine? Um, you, you fit 50 rounds in there and, and yeah, it, it, it's going to operate for you every time. Uh, you see, I just don't know how I feel about gravity fed magazines. Um, but that having, you know, what you said about drums, the only drum I've ever owned for a firearm was a um, the Magpul D60, the 60 round drum that they make. And was that, was that for an AR? Or? Yeah, yeah, that was for an AR. Um, and I, I never had any issues with it. I mean, I would load a full 60 rounds in it, and it would feed every single time. Never had any issues with it. Um, okay. But I mean, you again, know, I've, you know, I've had the um, the, the drum. I, I had a. Um, 
Oh, crap. What do they call it? it, it it's basically an AK shotgun, and, and I traded it for something else. The um, um, the Saga 12? Yeah, yeah, it was a Saga 12. Um, and and I, it, it had a drum, and I think it was, it, you know, I couldn't get more than, um, like, 10 rounds in it, which, you know, I mean, that, that's plenty for a shotgun, right. I think. Um, but it was, you know, advertised as, like, a, a 25 or, or, or something. I, I don't even remember what the drum was. But, but I was I was so disappointed in, in that drum. I tried another one for an AK, um, and and the same thing. It's supposed to be fifty round drum. You know, I I, it, I could probably get thirty two rounds in it, um, and and it would work effect as as advertised. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just not. And and, and you, know, you you say gravity fed for the PS ninety. It, it's still got a spring and and, and operating system, you know, right? Like. like it's it's not like you know it, gravity fed sounds like a paintball gun. Yeah, the way you say it. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I did grow up playing paintball, so <laughs> yeah. The only thing I didn't like about the PS ninety is because you know it, it grabs a little bit of the beard hair and, and yanks it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Um, no, I'm I'm definitely interested in seeing. I mean, I saw I saw a video of a guy uh, reviewing one test firing it and everything. Um, but guy, guy had horrible trigger discipline while he was shooting it. Um, apparently he doesn't know what trigger reset is, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, like he's just, he's blasting through rounds. I think it comes with a, uh, with a 20 round magazine, um, just like the FN and, hey, we go. Um, I mean, he's just, he's blowing through it. So, uh, we're going to have to leave it there. We're running short on time. Hey guys, uh, I, I want to interrupt for a second. second. We've just yeah, got to be retaliated by Iran. By Iran. The uh, uh, tens, tens of missiles, of missiles on outside, outside air base in the Anwar province. province. No <laughs> casualties <laughs> yet. Yet, uh, 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 port yet. yet, and then and no, no anything about anything like hitting them. All right, thanks for that, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about it the whole show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we are we are definitely going to keep uh, keep an update on that. Uh, as I said before, um, don't forget to tune in on Monday nights for my other show, Two Beards Talking, with my co-host Donnie J. Uh, we're definitely, hopefully, next week going to have a lot more information on this uh, attack as stuff comes in. Um, and also, don't forget to check out uh, Rod's other company, Two A Training LLC. Uh, get up with him, and like he said, if you're not in the area, he will refer you to somebody in your area. Um, and don't forget to look us up on Facebook, 2AT Second Amendment Talk as well. I don't think I, I think I got everything. Rod, you got anything for us? No, I just want to, um, you know, wish everybody a happy new year. And anybody that, that is uh, abroad or going abroad, uh, please be safe and uh, keep your head on a swivel. Absolutely. Um, again, big shout out to the troops overseas and on the home front. We appreciate everything y'all are doing. Come home safe. Keep up the good work. We're all rooting for you. This has been 2AT on Armed Radio. I'm Daniel Sanders for Rod Burks. Thanks for listening, everybody. Good.